Well, hey guys, in today's video, we're gonna talk about an aspect of skin and total body aging that does not get enough attention, enough direct attention. People kind of mention it in passing, it's suggested, a lot of people might even fear monger around this unnecessarily and cause you to follow extreme diets and fads. We're gonna set the record straight, but it is important to understand this process. What the heck am I even talking about? It is called glycation. And this is not the first video on this channel I have with regards to how glycation impacts your skin and skin aging. Now on this channel, we do not, we do not demonize normal healthy aging. Normal healthy aging is something to be celebrated because there really is no alternative in my mind. You want to age, okay? Think about it, you want to age. You want to have a long life and with that comes aging. But there definitely are lifestyle choices that we can make that can push the aging process at a faster rate and it will show up on your face, in your skin, for sure, but it also is impacting different organ systems in your body as well. In one way in which that happens through our lifestyle choices is via the process of glycation. Glycation is a biological process wherein glucose and other sugars bind to different biomolecular entities, if you will, throughout the body. These include proteins, lipids, nucleic acids, which are what make up DNA and it creates this very stiff rigid structure and when we're talking about the skin that influences skin texture uh, it influences the flexibility of your skin and it also leads to an increase in collagen destroying enzymes called matrix metalloproteinases it activates those I should say leading to loss of collagen loss of the supportive framework these compounds also accumulate in the skin and lead to the appearance of discoloration in the form of yellowing. Don't get it twisted, glycation is actually part of the normal healthy aging process. However, your lifestyle habits can influence to what extent they accumulate and the rate at which they accumulate. One of the ways in which we can influence the extent of glycation in our skin and our body is through dietary choices. Limiting the consumption of refined sugary carbohydrates. Unfortunately, many people hear this messaging and can misinterpret it or misrepresent it to their audience as well, I should say, uh, in, the, in the concept that we should not consume any sugar whatsoever. But what we're talking about here and what is actually relevant and what you should think about is not just sugars in general, but added sugars, sugars that are added to foods, and not just sugars, but foods that are fried or grilled. This includes meat. What about sugar that is naturally found in foods in their whole food state? I'm talking fruits and vegetables, because this is an area where a lot of influencers I've noticed in the wellness space lead their audience astray, terrify them away from perfectly healthy foods, and they'll say, well, look at all of the sugar in an orange. Look at all of the sugar in this fruit. You should only eat a small amount. This is such bad health information. Fruits and vegetables do not need to be restricted, bearing you don't have some kind of allergy to something in them um, or intolerance. Uh, fruits and vegetables have a variety of compounds in them that help to slow down the metabolism of sugar and limit the increase in blood glucose. Fruits and vegetables are a great source of fiber and antioxidants, both of which help to balance the influence of sugars um, as they are metabolized on, on your body. Um, fiber is also really important for the health of your gut microbiome as well. Uh, fiber is a source of fuel for the good bacteria in your gut. Other things that lead to the accumulation of ages in our skin are, well, sun exposure, ultraviolet radiation. Not only does it damage DNA and destroy collagen, but it also leads to the formation of advanced glycation end products in the skin and creates a lot of reactive oxygen species. Pollution, which is not something you necessarily have a lot of control over, plays a huge role. Smoking tobacco definitely can lead to an increase. So what should you be doing to help with your total health as well as the health of your skin to not hasten the aging process 
by accumulation of a lot of advanced glycation and products. When it comes to sugars, you do not need to restrict the consumption of fruits and vegetables. Focus on eating whole foods. Focus on trying to cook your own meals at home and not rely on what is called ultra processed foods. By ultra processed foods as a general category, these are things, think of, think of things that are prepackaged foods, ready made, ready in two minute type meals. Unfortunately, these types of ultra processed foods, they are highly palatable. They're low density, high calorie, high sugar, high salt, low nutrient quality. So you eat these foods, but they're not very satiating in the long run. You end up hungry. They don't fill you up. They have a poor nutrient quality and quantity and they're full of a lot of added sugar. So your body processes that very quickly. They're easy to metabolize, quick to metabolize, and that is a situation that leads to the accumulation of advanced glycation end product. The other category is sugar-sweetened beverages. Starbucks drinks, <laughs> sodas, juices, and juice concentrate. Now, even juice that comes from fruits, just juiced fruits, is still very high in sugar. It's not the same as eating fruits in their whole form because the fiber is often stripped away and it ends up being quite a bolus of, of sugar. Um, so focus on eating a diet that is primarily whole foods, minimally processed. It's okay to eat, you know, a lot of food is processed to a certain extent. So you gotta be kinda in the details there as far as what you mean. Ultra process is what I'm talking about. Restricting, limiting, trying your best to avoid and get away from. Um, processed foods, I mean, olive oil is technically a processed food. Uh, so, you know, don't be like that person in the comments section, well, everything is processed, of course, but Ultra processed foods are often convenience foods. They're easy to pre prepare quickly, but they unfortunately add a lot of sugar, a lot of salt to make it super palatable, and they're not very satiating in the long run. Also limit consumption of crispy foods. Foods that are fried, grilled, oftentimes contain high amounts of advanced glycation end product. I did a video a while ago all about uh, the worst foods for collagen, and I talk about the impact of cooking foods at high temperatures, especially meats, and how that you know leads to glycation. Also increases the amount of, of carcinogens in like your meats, for example. There are strategies in food preparation to minimize the formation of these. One of them is marinating your meats in some sort of acidic uh, solution. Uh, lemon juice, citrus fruits, vinegar can cut down actually on the formation of, uh, of glycation end products that will end up in your skin, in your body, and play a role in disease processes. People online tend to take very extreme approaches. And they'll say, oh, you have to absolutely go no sugar. And a lot of people document their journey doing this uh, because it is engaging content, okay? Like you'll find videos on the internet of, I gave up sugar, all added sugars for 30 days and my life has never been better. Like, you know, I, I was struggling and now all of a sudden I'm a multimillionaire because <laughs> I no longer, you know, have any sugar in my diet. Um, you know, extremes like that, they tend to perform well in social media, but they're not necessarily reflective of reality and what is attainable for most people. I don't believe that you have to totally eliminate added sugar in your diet. The American Heart Association recommends that women limit their added sugar consumption to no more than 25 grams or six teaspoons per day, and men restrict it to no more than 36 grams per day, which is the equivalent of nine teaspoons of added sugar. So if you just start becoming familiar with the foods that you're eating and the added sugars, um, you can get a sense of that and you can make simple swaps. That way you don't necessarily have to give up something that you really look forward to that is a sweet treat. Like for example, a lot of people don't realize that some of the condiments they're adding to things have a lot of added sugar and some simple swaps can eliminate that added sugar. Added sugar is a confusing topic because a lot of different ingredients are actually you know, added sugars. So I'm gonna put here on the screen, and I want you to take a screenshot of this. This is a list of all things that can be considered added sugar. That includes honey. So you do wanna factor that in as well into your total daily added sugar intake. Unfortunately, it does require a lot of attention 
in the beginning especially, if you're not familiar with this concept of added sugars, it does require you to read ingredients a little bit more carefully. And for some people, reading ingredients can mess with their mental health. If that is you, you know, rather than focusing on reading labels so much, consider instead trying to incorporate and add to your diet more whole foods, more fruits, vegetables, legumes, nuts, seeds, whole grains, as well as lean proteins. Try and add these things to your diet, not focus so much then on, oh my God, has this got sugar in it? Has this got sugar in it? Because that really can mess with people's mental health. Now, another question that I have seen a lot whenever I discuss sugar sag, in other words, advanced glycation end products and skin aging is, what about metformin? What are my thoughts on metformin for skin anti-aging? Okay, so metformin is a medication used to treat diabetes, and it has a variety of effects that are beneficial for patients with type 2 diabetes. It enhances insulin sensitivity. Um, the other thing that metformin does is it actually increases production of the satiety hormone, um, glucagon-like peptide one, or GLP-1. So you don't you know, overeat, you feel full sooner, which really can help a lot of patients with type 2 diabetes who also struggle with obesity. Metformin also lowers glucose production from the liver and it decreases intestinal absorption of glucose. So all in all, you know, it does a variety of things that are incredibly beneficial for patients who have diabetes. But metformin has been shown to be associated, association, remember, does not equal causation, but association with a decrease in mortality, death. Um, so there are a lot of studies, mostly cells in a dish, animal models, that delve into, well, can this drug that does these things, could it possibly have an anti-aging effect? When it comes to looking at it for the skin, the studies that we have at this point are all done in cells in a dish or in animal models, preclinical. That is so important to keep in mind because a lot of times, stuff that shows promise preclinically does not translate to real world human use. It doesn't, it doesn't end up being beneficial. So I want you to keep that in mind. What has been shown in animal models and in cells in a dish is that metformin, when you treat human skin cells with metformin, it actually can um, suppress some of the destructive effects of ultraviolet radiation on those cells. There are also some studies done in mice showing similar effects when mice are given metformin and exposed to ultraviolet radiation, um, including not only given um, metformin systemically into their body, but also metformin applied to the skin as a cream has been shown to help cut down on some of the damaging effects of ultraviolet radiation in the skin. So, you know, the hope would be to advance that research further so that one day, maybe who knows, we'll have a metformin cream um, that, you know, could potentially help slow down glycation in the skin. Now, that's, that's the theoretical, uh, you know, advantage here of studying this, but we're not there yet. So while it's not interesting, while it's not exciting, while it's not new, it is the truth. And that is eating a balanced diet consisting primarily of whole foods, not relying on ultra-processed, packaged, ready-made meals, um, not consuming alcohol in excess, not smoking. These are all things that you can do to offset and slow down accumulation of glycation in the body and help your overall health span. That's the number of years you are on this planet where you are living a healthy life. Um, and you also can help keep your skin looking youthful, glowy, radiant, healthy, and helping preserve the integrity of skin as a functional organ so that it doesn't break down when I get, you know, to be in my older adult years and I'm not, you know, getting skin infections, skin tears. Um, okay, it's not so much the cosmetic thing, although that can incentivize people to keep going. All right, y'all, that's what I wanted to talk about in today's video with regards to skin aging and glycation. I hope this was informative to you. Um, if you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye. Bye.